Welcome to 12 Wing Productions and the Energy Sovereignty Project. Let's begin with the solar installation. The solar installation is composed of 10.2 kilowatts of solar installed on the roof. We installed a little over 10 kilowatts to make up for the fact that not all of the panels were pointed in the optimal direction. And with that, let's go into the garage and I'll walk you through the proposed layout. Now that we have the preliminary layout done for the rooftop solar, now we have to start to focus in on the home and how we're going to convert that power so that it's usable by the house and also usable to uh, get power to the grid. On the wall here will be a large bi-directional inverter to be able to take the power from the panels and feed the home and also be able to take the power from the batteries to feed the home. Behind this wall is the breaker panel, and we'll go ahead and go back around there in a minute to take a look at that. Uh, but basically, because we're running the home in a configuration where the entire home is going to be run off of the batteries, we have to have an inverter that's large enough to be able to handle that amount of current. We're going to have the air conditioning system, washer and dryer, everything, all those high loads are actually going to be run straight from the batteries under normal conditions. So the batteries themselves, they're going to be laid in three banks of two along the floor here. The Powerwall 2 batteries can be laid out so that they're relatively close together, so it shouldn't take up too much room on the inside of the garage. We've decided to put it on the inside of the garage because we have room to do so. Every installation is going to be different. Your installation may require that you have it on the outside of the house, and when you do that, then maybe you have to have the conversation of do you put the... Uh, do you put the batteries inside some kind of a locked enclosure or at the very least do you put them in where you can have some kind of video surveillance on them? As home solar and home battery power become ubiquitous, that's going to mean that the opportunists are also going to be seeking to uh, move in where they can and so protection of the batteries is going to be somewhat important as we move on. So now let's go ahead and take a look on the other side of the wall and have a look at the breaker panel. On this side of the house, we have the breaker panel. Now, in a standard solar installation, you'll have two meters. One meter will be to tally the power from the solar array itself, and the other will tally your total consumption. And then, depending on your area, from state to state, they do net metering different. But depending on your area, what they'll then do is a subtraction method between how much you created from your solar panels and how much you consumed. But this leads to a strange thing occurring on your bill. In December, for some strange reason, you will oftentimes show that you've actually delivered power to the grid. Well, that power went to the grid, it probably should have gone to your home. And that's what initially kicked off the idea of energy sovereignty. And how do we make this more simple? And so we came up with a connection that we're calling grid compliant. And what that does is it allows you to separate your system from the grid in the case of a power failure so that you're not endangering the lives of linemen or whatnot that are trying to make repairs. But it also honors your own energy sovereignty. That is to say that the power you've created from the solar cells you've paid for go into the batteries that you own. And so now you own all of that power. And we feel that that's a very important distinction to make when selecting a grid hookup for your home solar if it's going to include batteries. Now, it is possible to set up a battery backup for your home so that in the case of a grid failure, that it uses your batteries to power certain circuits so that your refrigerator will continue, you'll have some lights on, you'll still have uh, something to run your computer so that the computer doesn't crash. But that's just a small panel. And that usually, again, is a, a small daughter panel off of the main panel that's then fed by the batteries through a small inverter. Well, in the case of our installation, we're actually going to be doubling this panel and we're going to have all of the home's circuits all powered by the battery. Right? Eventually, we're going to move 
all of the circuits out of the main panel because the main panel is going to be only a single 240 volt 100 amp circuit on an 80 amp breaker because that's all we need and we're sourcing the system we're specking the system out as far as its communication with the grid on a 20 kilowatt approximately 20 kilowatt in and 20 kilowatts out so that means that at no point will the home be drawing any more than 20 kilowatts nor will it be putting out to the grid any more than 20 kilowatts and that brings us to the final piece of energy sovereignty transportation so in in days of old you had a farm you had a horse you fed that horse from what you grew on your farm. You hitched it to a wagon that allowed you to then travel to town or travel to surrounding towns to get the best price for your grain or your cattle. Somewhere along the line, we lost that. We lost sight of the importance of that. And at some point, it became okay to pull oil out of foreign countries, across oceans, send the oil across on a tanker, have that oil then transferred to an oil refinery to then turn it into the gasoline or diesel that we buy, have that trucked then to a local gas station where we actually purchase it. How did that become okay? Uh, how did we come to accept that? Well, one of the strong drivers for creating the energy sovereignty project was the realization that we didn't really have to do that well earlier when we talked about the powerwall twos why six of them well we calculated out that three or four of them are plenty to run an entire house on nothing but battery power alone well so what so what are we doing with the extra batteries well, when we were doing our calculation for the home and for the grid compliant hookup, what we discovered was is that in spring and summer, we're actually producing twice as much power as the house needed. Well, so at some point we're going to be sending some to the grid, but the power that you send to the grid, you don't get paid fully the value of that power. So if you can store that power at the home, what would that mean? How much equivalent of gasoline could you recover from sunlight during the spring and summer months? Well, we've calculated out that you can get 100 miles a day of free driving approximately four to six months out of the year. And we'd like to put that to the test. And the only way to put that to the test is to actually have a dedicated extra bank of batteries that we're going to then run through a Tesla charger to charge the car. And so as you follow the Energy Sovereignty Project with us, you'll be able to actually see how many miles a year the vehicle could actually be run off of nothing but sunlight. And we'll do the equivalent calculations to see what uh, what dollar amount that comes to. And with that, we'll close out for now. And thank you for watching. We'll revisit this when we do the actual install. And I hope you join us. I hope you have fun with the project. I hope this is something that may apply to your own solar installation and help you make some decisions as to how you want to set up your own system.